Okay, so I am presenting on Cacti. Uh, so Cacti is a uh, PHP-based SNMP grapher, specifically. Uh, so it's not a monitor, not really, and it's definitely not an alerter. So if you're, if you're thinking of using it to uh, monitor the uptime of your servers uh, or to alert based on the values of the uh, SNMP uh, values that it's reading, uh, it's not built for that. It doesn't really do that. So that's a different product. Uh, OBS specific, or not OBS, uh, Cacti is specifically graphing the values that it's getting from SNMP, uh, making those look relatively pretty and then presenting them easily and quickly. Uh, so it's based on the Cacti itself is based on PHP, and then but under the hood, it's using a graphing tool called RRD tool. Uh, that's a fairly common graphing tool. Uh, you can use that standalone, and you can just feed it raw data uh, that you've collected from various sources and generate graphs from that. And so what Cacti is doing is Cacti is automatically pulling your SNMP data, and then it's automatically generating those graphs uh, to show you through the web interface. So it's just packaging everything together nicely uh, so you can get to it. Uh, so is everybody familiar with SNMP? Everybody knows what I'm talking about, about SNMP polling? Okay, good. Uh, so, Can you sort of elaborate a little bit on it? Uh, so SNMP stands for Simple Network Monitoring Protocol, I believe. Management, Management Protocol. Um, Management. Yes. Uh, it allows you to read and technically write uh, a whole bunch of system values uh, diagnostic values from a system, CPU usage, RAM usage, network traffic, that sort of thing. So, uh, Cacti is based primarily in PHP, like I said. So the easiest way to run that is with a LAMP stack. Uh, so you run it on Linux, Apache, MySQL, uh, and PHP. Um, I'm using MySQL as the back end. That's what they recommend. Um, I don't know. I assume it would be compatible with Postgres, but I... Um, I haven't looked at setting it up to use Postgres uh, instead, so I just go with uh, technically MariahDB, um, essentially MySQL. Uh, so the setup is easy if you follow the Cacti way of doing it. Uh, if you go with all the prepackaged RPMs that are in the repos, uh, then you can just uh, run it the way you get it and you don't have to do a whole lot of setup. Uh, but if you want to start customizing things, then you have to start moving web source files around and uh, you're better off just doing it from scratch and just downloading the source and, and building your own web stack from scratch because uh, otherwise you'll just screw yourself up. Uh, so the Cacti package itself is in the ePAL repository in CentOS. I'm not sure about Debian where they put it, but in uh, CentOS Red Hat, uh, it's in ePAL so you can grab it from there. Uh, as far as dependencies go, uh, there's a list of all the uh, packages. So here's sort of the um, here's sort of the the list of commands that I recorded while I was setting this up. Um, so this is basically the list of dependencies that I know that you need uh, based on some other documentation I found. Uh, so you're pulling in HTTP, uh, HTTP devel, uh, MariahDB server. Uh, and then you're pulling in um, a variety of different PHP packages, PHP for MySQL, um, PHP uh, CLI is important, uh, PHP SNMP, so that's the SNMP package that's gonna be used by Cacti, um, as well as uh, the system SNMP utilities and RRD tool, which is the uh, graphing utility. And then lastly, you will install Cacti. And Cacti should pull most of these dependencies in, uh, but it's not guaranteed. They haven't, I haven't double checked, but they don't necessarily package it properly um, for the other repos. So uh, you're better off just putting in all of those and then you know that all your dependencies that you need are gonna get in there. And Cacti itself does bring in a couple dependencies on top of this when I installed it. Uh, so that's not a complete list, but it is everything you need uh, on a CentOS system. Uh, so, I've got it pretty much up and running, uh, but I will take you through some of the uh, steps that I did. Uh, so obviously I installed all of those dependencies, I installed Cacti, and then once you've got that installed, Cacti is gonna automatically create uh, an Apache config file on your server 
that's gonna that has the configuration to serve the Cacti website. So this is what I mean by if you um, if you want to change how Cacti is running on Apache, um, the the Cacti package is gonna break that if you ever touch it too much. So if you move things around, then the package is gonna try and put them back anytime you update. Uh, so you either have to do it their way or you have to do it from scratch the other way. So if we go into the Apache config directory, you can see that we've got a cacti.conf file. And if we take a look in here, you can see that cacti itself is actually running out of uh, slash user share cacti. So all of the cacti uh, web PHP files are in user share cacti, and then it's aliasing that to a directory, a root uh, directory from your for your Apache server. So here we've got alias slash cacti slash user share cacti. So when you go to slash cacti on your web server, you're going to end up in user share cacti or cacti on your file system, and that's how it's going to load in all the web files. So again, if you want to put this anywhere else. Uh, don't use the package because it's going to screw you up when it updates. So the only thing we have to change, uh, we're running uh, HTTPD 2.4. Um, so we have to use the 2.4 style ACL. And by default, this was uh, require host localhost. So the default installation only makes Cacti available to the local host. Uh, so you have to be running on the machine to get to it. Uh, obviously, I'm running, I'm accessing this from a different machine and you want to make it available to parts of your network. So I just set it to require all granted, which lets anybody access it. Uh, you could restrict that if you wanted. Um, or if your network is already secure, you can leave it open. It's up to you. And then they also have the ACL for Apache 2.2. So it's sort of a universal config. Um, but if you update this one uh, and you're running 2.4 like I am, it won't work because it's not going to load that in. So you have to make sure you update it in the right spot for the right version that you're running. Or do both. Uh, and then everything else in this file, you don't have to touch. Uh, they even say um, you should leave this require all denied because this is all uh, just system paths that uh, Apache needs to know about uh, for the behind the scenes stuff that Cacti is doing, but you don't need to access any of them, so, so just leave them all as denied. Uh, so that's all in that file. Uh, so once we've made that change, uh, then we start our services. Uh, so we would go through, and because I'm a diehard, I say service HTTPD start, even though this is uh, CentOS 7 and it is running systemd. Because um, if I try and use systemctl, I always type systemctl HTTPD start, and it says no system, no service, or no command called HTTPD. I could. That's <laughs> that's an excellent point. Uh, so we go through, we start uh, HTTPD, uh, MariahDB, and SNMPD on the system, and we will enable those at boot at the same time with systemctl. And then we're going to run uh, MySQL secure installation. Uh, so for anybody who's unfamiliar with this handy little utility that they provide, uh, with MariahDB slash MySQL, uh, they provide a little utility that you just run this, and it sets your root password. Uh, sets the server avail the, the listen availability of the server to localhost only, uh, deletes any test users and deletes any test databases, and basically just wipes it clean from the scratch from the start. So you only have a root user with a password listening on localhost, which is the most secure state that your database server can be in. Uh, so you go through that. It asks you a couple questions. You give it a root password, uh, easy peasy, and then. Uh, once we're done that, once we've got our database in a clean state where we don't uh, don't have any extras in there that we don't want, we need to go in and do some tunables on the uh, cacti or on the DB for cacti. Uh, these are all uh, parameters that cacti will complain about if you try and run cacti uh, without changing any of these. Um, the defaults are all apparently too small in cacti's opinion. Uh, so those are located in um, the my.cnf.d directory. So we can go there and take a look. And you can see there's a couple different config files here. Uh, the one we want to deal with is the server.cnf because we're running MySQL as a server. We're not concerned with the client parameters 
for this. And if we look in this my.cnf file or the server.cnf file, uh, there's a couple different sections, which is part of the MariahDB uh, compatibility layer that they do. So if you're, they say right here in the file, they say if you're copying this config file between MySQL and Mariah, um, there's, there are some unique values between the two. Um, so you might want to, things that are unique, you can put in different sections and they'll get included or ignored based on that. Uh, but because I'm running Mariah, I just put everything in the Mariah section and then I know they're all going to get loaded on this server. So if I go through them, they're all pretty simple. I didn't, um, I didn't really read into any of these. I just sort of um, looked up the correct way to set them and the correct way. I had to look up the unit size for them because Cacti reports in megabytes and uh, the config is in um, just bytes. Uh, so we have to update some heap table size um, sizes for RAM usage. Um, and we have to change some of the um, INNO DB uh, options, how it's um, running the back end for the database server. And that's pretty much it. So once we've got all those set, we can reload Mariah and it'll load in with those new settings. And then we should be ready just about to start Cacti. So the last thing to do with our database is we will need a database user called Cacti, or I'm calling it Cacti. Uh, so we create a database called Cacti to store all of our um, Cacti logs. And then we're going to grant all permissions on the um, Cacti database here. And we're going to say create a user Cacti localhost uh, identified by the password. And we're just going to give it Cacti DB password. Uh, so that's the password we're going to give to Cacti to connect to our database once we're done that. And then uh, we'll grant it uh, Cacti needs grant select on mysql.timezone name table. So this is the MySQL system database where it stores the, the system parameters for the database server. And then there's a table in here called time zone name, which stores all the different time zones that the um, system locale has. So Cacti is reading those that way uh, when you do time-based graphing in Cacti, it has the right times. <clears throat> Otherwise, Cacti gets stuck in UTC and it might not necessarily match the, the polls that you're, you're looking at. Uh, we first privileges for MySQL. And the last thing we need to do is the time zone name table is actually empty by default. That ships with uh, MariahDB. So it actually doesn't have anything there. So if you want to actually put data in that, uh, Mariah tells you, oh, well, you need to, uh, you need to convert your system locale file full of time zones uh, and put that into the database for us. So they give you this handy little command with Mariah that is mysql underscore tz info to SQL. So you run that and then you give it the directory uh, that has all of your time zones in it, which on rel CentOS is user share zone info. And this is actually a directory full of all those different uh, time zone files. And it'll parse through all those files. Uh, it'll read any that are valid. And then we pipe those into MySQL as root. And we're putting that into the uh, MySQL database. And the MySQL tz info command knows to put it in the time zone table. So we don't have to give it the table. We just give it the database. Uh, and it knows where to put that in the MySQL database to make those usable. And then lastly, uh, for PHP, we need to also set the PHP time zone uh, as well as the database time zone, so we do that in uh, php.ini, which by default is read from slash etc, and there's a php.ini file in slash etc. And line 878 is date.timezone, and this takes the, um, the, standard, uh, the standard naming format where it's um, continent, I guess, slash Winnipeg. So if you look up, there's a, you can look up the PHP time zone list online and it'll, it'll give you the whole list. And so America, Winnipeg is one of those time zone locations so we can enter that in. And that sets our time zone for PHP. So once we've got all that, we should be able to go to our Cacti server and complete the Cacti setup. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, 
No, I thought I had one more. Maybe not. We are going to travel to the past. Oh, there we go. It's not showing well. So as VMware loads the snapshot in, so we're loading to the point just after we finished all that database tuning and we've loaded the time zone database uh, into MySQL. Now that's all ready to go. And so this would be the first time that you're actually connecting to your web server. Uh, and this will be the first run of Cacti. Uh, so I'll take you through. It's basically just, if you've ever set up WordPress or another, um, another web app, it's very similar. Um, they just give you a, a web setup uh, sequence and you fill in the boxes, anything it needs. Uh, and then it gives you access to the app. So let's just double check. It's running. So now if we go to our web server at slash cacti, which will load up the uh, cacti web app. Hopefully this works. Hooray! So the first thing we're greeting with, greeted with is the GPL license, which we are asked to accept. We click begin. And then it will go through all of the pre-config checks. You can see that it says um, MySQL time zone support. Uh, database is populated with global time zones, blah, blah. Um, when I went through this, uh, I didn't know any of these that ne needed to be done. So basically I had to go through, okay, it says this isn't done. Okay, now figure out how to do that. Okay, now go back, run this again. Oh, now it says this is missing. Okay, now go back in, figure out how to do that, blah, blah, blah. Yes? We should probably mention that MySQL time zone and stuff, there are tons of web apps out there yeah. that silently fail in interesting ways. <laughs> if you haven't done this in yeah. your MySQL database, mm -hmm. they don't tell you, they just give you bogus results. Yeah. So there's a lot of web apps where if it does anything even remotely date related or time related, and lots of them do without you knowing it under the hood, the solution is always or frequently just load bloody time zone tables in MySQL and oh, mystery problem hmm. went away. <laughs> And the only way you normally find it is if you've got the MySQL logging level cranked up to try and figure yeah. out what on earth is going wrong. And then at debug level, it emits a warning saying, <laughs> uh, you know, warning, you've called the date function, but there's no time zone. Yeah. <laughs> so you can find it eventually, but yeah. it's, it's a good one to keep in mind for any problem yeah. with MySQL. Uh, yeah, so there's the MySQL time zone support, and then there's the uh, PHP time zone support, uh, which we had to set up. And then it does a whole bunch of other uh, parameter checking, most of which are not right on the first thing. So these were all, uh, the PHP modules uh, were all good. I didn't have to do any updating to those uh, because of all those dependencies that I made sure to pull in before. Um, so if you didn't do that, uh, some of these might be missing. Uh, and then PHP modules, the optional ones are there too, SNMP. And the only thing it complains about is the MariahDB version in the CentOS repo, uh, but it doesn't refuse to run or anything like that. It just complains that, oh, I don't like this version, it's too low. Uh, and everything else, it says, you're good. So these are pretty much all settings that we had to go through. Uh, if you look at the, if you look at my list of parameters, things like uh, character set, heap table size, join buffer size, you will see character set, collation server, max connections, those were fine. Uh, heap table size, allowed packet size, table size. Uh, most of these I had to increase. Um, their defaults are super small, like 16 megabytes, really, really small size. Uh, so I had to go in and just, I sort of just picked random numbers that were higher than, or 
base two numbers that were higher than their defaults that they ask for. And it's good with those. Uh, if you were running this at very large scale, like thousands of hosts, uh, you might have to go in and you'd have to be more familiar with MySQL and actually tune these to match what it's, what it's requiring. Because uh, it may need much more than this once you have large data sets. Um, but at the scale that I'm running this at, these have been working fine for me. It hasn't experienced any abnormal load. So we go next. And then we say this is the primary server. We can also run this as a, not a cluster, but a distributed, uh, distributed system where uh, if we have remote systems uh, that we want to collect SNMP data on that are higher latency away, uh, we can actually put a polar near those network devices and then we can just shuffle all that data back uh, through Cacti instead of doing many, many SNMP polls across a, long late, a high latency link. Uh, so we could set up a remote polar, but in this case, uh, primary server, because this is the only one we're running. And, and we go the next. Polar, does that flood resiliency as well? Like if you have, uh, and that uh, and the polar is going to maintain some data volume. No, I don't believe it records any data locally. Oh. Just, it's just a proxy. Yeah. Uh, so you'll see the only thing that has a red X is the location of Spine. Uh, Spine is another Cacti tool, which is a uh, pure C... SNMP polling utility. So you can pull SNMP in C code instead of using the PHP SNMP library. It's supposed to be quite a bit faster, but they don't prepackage it. So you have to build it from source if you want to run it. Uh, it's not too bad to compile. I did it at work um, just for fun, because uh, I thought, why not build the, uh, build the one that's more scalable and then don't have to worry about it. Um, there were a couple of dependencies I had to look up and sort of fumble with. Um, GCC to get it to spit the error out, tell me what it's missing, and then I can go back and, and search for those. Um, but it wasn't bad, and then you uh, put it in user local spine bin, or you put it wherever you want, and you can update this variable uh, at any time. You can just go into the config and point it to the right location, then you just switch polars and start using spine. But for smaller scale things, um, using the PHP SNMP library works fine. Let me go next. It says, oh, your directories are all good and they're all writable. And then we go next. Uh, templates, um, it includes by default only five SNMP templates. Uh, and this is all you get. So if they don't have what you're looking for here, uh, you're basically on your own and you're either searching for somebody else who's published one or you're making one from scratch. Uh, so far in the devices that I've been monitoring, these have been sufficient. Uh, so we're going to say include all of them. So bring all those templates in. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't really. There's only five of them, and you're going to need at least a couple of them. So I guess if you were only running custom, you wouldn't. But put them all in, and then we click Finish. And now we are faced with our default login, uh, and it's saving my password from last time, but I believe the defaults are admin, admin. Yes. So by default, uh, user account is admin, admin, and then it's going to tell you to change your password. Uh, so the old password was admin, and the new password was... What did I set it to? No, that's the old one. I don't know. I'll update it. The new password will be... Uh, Cacti-123. And annoyingly, by default, they have a password complexity requirement turned on. So you have to have a capital, lowercase, symbol, and number, uh, which is annoying and not actually more secure. But we could go and turn that off if we really wanted to. So here's the default uh, Cacti interface. And you'll notice at the top, we've got different tabs. So each tab is a different function from the web app. And depending on what you're doing will depend on which tab you go into. So right now we're in the console tab. I can make this a little bigger. So right now we're in the console tab. And this is where you're going to do all of your configuration. So you're going to create devices to monitor. Uh, and you're going to set up um, which, which parameters or which SNMP OIDs you're going to monitor on that system. Uh, so um, we can create a new graph 
But what we actually want to do is we actually don't need to touch the graphs much. Um, if you try and do it with graphs, it looks really hard. Like you have to do a bunch of extra setup and, and things. So the best way to do it is do it through devices. And then it's just going to automatically provision all the graphs that you need. And they're just going to work. So if we go under management and we click on devices, uh, we will see that there is, by default, the local Linux machine. So Cacti is automatically put in the local Linux machine, and it's going to let us do SNMP monitoring on the local machine. So we can take a look at this. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. So here's the device config for local Linux machine. We can we could rename it. Uh, we could give it a real host name. Um, the host name is the DNS name that it's going to use to resolve the host and actually query it. So you can use a DNS name. You can use an IP address, uh, depending on what you have. We can specify the polar. So if we were running distributed, uh, you'd want to pick the appropriate polar, depending on the network location of the device you're monitoring. And then the device template. So because this is a Linux machine, um, we want to use the local Linux template. And then depending on what else it was that we're monitoring, we want to pick a different template than that. Uh, collection threads, um, one is usually sufficient uh, unless you were pulling like 100 or 1,000 different SNMP values from one device. Um, then you can multi-thread it, but one thread is normally en enough. Uh, other than that, uh, the SNMP doesn't actually matter in this case because we're, we're talking locally. And you can see by default, it has already put in uh, graphs for, uh, for the machine. So it's got memory usage, load average, logged in users, and processes. And then if we wanted to add a, uh, a graph, we can also add in um, a couple of different graphs here. Uh, and some of it is a bit convoluted, um, depending on where you click. Um, it's Sort of weird. Some of it, like some graphs come from the template, other graphs uh, come from the device itself. Um, so that's sort of defined in the, the templates, the defaults, which you can get into if you want to get more complicated in what you're doing. So we've already got that set up. We've got some graphing happening. So now if we want to actually see the graphs that are happening for that device, we can go over to the graphs tab. And we've got this thing called the default tree. So Cacti, by default, runs in what they call tree mode, which lets you categorize um, your devices into different categories. And then you can display them by the tree. So here we click on the local Linux machine. And we can see that we don't have any graphs yet, because the pull interval is too long. So these will show up eventually. Uh, I think the default pull is um, five minutes. We can also. I think that's under devices. Uh, now I can't remember where the pull time is. You set it once and then you never have to set it again. Um, anyway, we'll come back to that. So under the settings, there's not really anything you have to change in here. Um, you can set some of the default graph, uh, graph sizes. So by default, it's creating a graph uh, 150 pixels tall, 500 pixels, pixels wide, and then it's going to squish, RRD tool is going to squish your data into that size. Um, so you don't have to worry about graph, um, graph indexes being out of range or anything like that, because it's going to squish everything automatically to fit that. Um, you can set your date format if you, uh, want to use uh, a different date format than what's got here. Uh, date separator, dash, dash underscore, uh, et cetera. Maybe it's under data collection. Might be. Uh, so under the polar is where you can see we've selected cmd.php as our polar. Uh, so if we were going to use spine, we would switch this to uh, spine instead of cmd.php. And authentication, uh, by default, it's using an internal user database. So you can add users 
Uh, you can give users view only permission so that they can't mess with your graphs at all. All they can do is view your graphs. And then you can also create admin users. Um, they say they can integrate with LDAP slash Active Directory, uh, which I wasn't able to get working. Uh, it looks like it should work uh, if you do if you just do um, bind logins and uh, do your authentication that way. It looks like it should work, but it doesn't. Uh, no, it'd be twenty twelve. Yeah. Were you four minutes off? Yeah. Hmm. We do have other LDAP. We do have other LDAP that doesn't use SSL. Yeah, but uh, it probably has a SASL, say for negotiation, or you can do start TLS with, a, with LDAP now. Um, so basically, Windows says if you're just giving me a plain text password on plain old unsecured LDAP, um, go take a long walk off the shore hmm. here. Yeah. Or whatever, and it goes away. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know. uh, so one last thing we can do in the settings is our mail server. So you can configure Cacti to automatically uh, generate reports, and then it'll email those reports to you. So if you want to have, you know, a, over the weekend or whatever, you want to have reports on your weekly traffic usage. Um, you could have it uh, generate a bunch of graphs, and then it'll email those off to you or whoever, um, so you can record those or look at them. Uh, but again, it's not event-based. So you can't say, oh, well, if the network traffic is this high, send an email. No, it doesn't do that. It only does, at this time, on this day, email me this graph. And that's all it's going to do. It's not going to do any fancy uh, alerting on that. So. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's analytics, not monitoring. Yes. Uh, Cacti still has one feature that I don't think you're likely going to cover here, that as far as I know is still unique automatic baselining. Uh, as far as I know, Cacti is still the only product that does this. It actually looks at like the last X configurable number of days worth of data figures out what the baseline was for the last, say, 30, 60, 90, 365, whatever days. And then whenever the value goes more than x standard deviations out of or away from what the baseline should have been, it generates similar. All right, I'm not sure why this graph is not showing up. It might be. I actually didn't double check that it was collecting graphs, but I will. I will jump ahead. We will jump back into the future. If not, I will connect to my other Cacti server, and I will actually show some real data. I want to do that anyways because. Um, I don't have any Cisco devices that I can plug this into, um, but basically the most common use case for Cacti is network monitoring, um, because you probably have you know a thousand network ports uh, that you might want to gather traffic stats on, uh, or you might want to do fancy things like say uh, 
what was, the, what was the sum of the traffic on all of those ports? Put that in a fancy graph. And there is a way to do that, uh, which I don't have an example of, but it can be done. So you could say, well, the, the total switch traffic uh, over this period of time was, you know, 10,000 gigabytes or whatever. Uh, you can report the immediate th throughput and the, uh, the average throughput, et cetera. Okay, so let's go back to here. All right, so there's something wrong with the default, the default machine graph uh, for cacti. But if we wanted to create a new device, uh, what we can do is, you'd think there would be a nice big like flashing add device button, but there isn't. It's this tiny little plus symbol up here in the right hand corner. That's the only way to add a device. So we add a device in here. And then we would fill in all this info, uh, host name, description, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I believe, So it won't let us save without a name. So we'll SNMP. Let's see if this will work. Save successful. Okay, great. For some reason, it's got this weird wait timer. Uh, every any time you apply something, uh, they must. They're just assuming that your back end is slow, and it's like, okay, don't do anything else. Wait. Okay, now the action is done. So once you create a device, um, by default, oh, there we go, never mind. SNMP, no response from that host. So it did create the host, and then as soon as you create the host, uh, it's gonna right away do an SNMP poll on the host and try and find out, uh, is the host up? Uh, it's gonna get the, the SNMP base information, and then it's gonna display that to you so you know you have the right, the right device. So let me just quickly see if this will work. that. Nope. Okay. I have no idea why that's not working. Let's do this. What server is this running on? No, it's just here. Uh, darn, what's the password for this? See, I would make it a simple password, but the complexity requirement made me use a complex password, and now I've forgotten that password which means I had to write down the password, which made the password less secure. All right, well, we're, getting, we're running out of time, so I will leave you off with, what's that? I'll leave you off with one, with one good graph, the graph that I was referring to earlier, which is, if you've ever heard of the Manitoba Internet Exchange, uh, they are the local IX, and they have this handy little graph embedded in the corner of their website, uh, which is the live traffic stats from the IX. And if we click on that, we get a nice RRRD graph generated by Cacti, giving us the MBEX traffic stats. And you can see here, um, the scale is gigabits per second, and then the scale time is at the bottom. Uh, so this is over 24 hours. And you can see it automatically calculates the current the average and the maximum. So the maximum today was uh, 1.14 gigabits a second uh, aggregate going through the switch. And then you can see the um, different time periods that they've calculated the graphs for. So that's what an RRD graph looks like. 
Um, they really all look the same, uh, and you can configure them to look however you want, change the, the scale, the, the coloring, et cetera. Uh, so, any questions? Yes? Sure. Everything we were doing on the web GUI there, was that all editing a uh, classical config file, or was that like all databases? It's all database, yeah. Yeah, all of Cacti's um, persistent stuff is in the MySQL databases. So, I guess if people want a config based approach, they would just, did strictly Cacti just use R or just use Google? Uh, not really, no, because the the cacti is handling the device logic. So it's handling all of the RRD templates are all built into cacti. So you, could, you can extract the RRD config from cacti if you know you want to have a limited scope of, of graphing things. Um, you, can, you can look in, in the cacti uh, graphing, uh, if I go back to it, Yeah, you still need to do the SNMP polling, but you can, if you look in uh, graphs, even though these don't show, you can see, one of these will work, come on. No, nope, apparently not. There is a show graph source button when it's working properly. And that graph, let's see if I can pull one up here. So this is the, this is the Cacti interface to the template. So you don't even have to write RRD tool uh, config. It, it gives you a semi-nice interface. This is a pretty ugly interface, but you're not typing RRD uh, parameters into it, so you can specify all of this. So this is what Cacti is doing for you. It's doing all of the front end to RRD tool and SNMP. Uh, but if you wanted to, you can just pull SNMP on your own, log it into a database, and then graph it with RRD tool. You just have to write all the queries yourself. Yeah. Um, it provides most of the functionality. I don't know what graphing utility they're using on the back end. Um, what Cacti really shines in is time sequence graphing. Uh, you can keep you know, 10 years of graphs in Cacti and graph them very easily, um, whereas Zabbix focuses on, on monitoring and alerting. And typically, in my experience, the tools that do monitoring and alerting suck at graphing for some reason. Even though they've got such a great example right here that's all open source, they could just put this in their code. Um, I've yet to find a good monitoring tool that also does really good graphing like Cacti. Yeah. Just wondering, have you set up any custom templates and is that an easy thing to do? Um, I have modified the templates a little bit. Um, what did I have to do? Um, I had to change, no I didn't. Um, I did have to change the, the graph data sources um, because it was picking, the way it was generating the graph, it was titling things wrong. Um, so it was uh, on my switch, uh, all of the interfaces have descriptions and but it was def the order of the, of the data label that it was picking. It was picking the interface number before it was picking the label. So I'd look at my graph and it'd be like, oh, ETH1 has uh, 100 megabits. Great, I don't know what that port is. Um, so I had to go into the device template uh, and tell it to order things differently so that it would pick the name before it would pick the, the number. So to customize nib entries it should be, yeah. If you, as long as you know the MIB you're looking for, then yeah. Maybe I just missed it, but at what point was the password supplied to the Cacti for the device? That was. Uh, yes, I may have skipped that one step. No, no, that's where I created. Uh, where did I put it in the Cacti config? 
Oh, there we go. Um, that's a good question. I don't remember. So is there an SD cast I thought it was during the web install process. Yeah. So it would have been then. I thought it was. I thought it would have been, but I don't remember it being it asking me. Yeah, you typed it twice. It was no, no, that was the that was the web interface login. This is the database password for the app. Yeah. Oops. So in some apps, that, that there's a whole screen for setting all of those parameters, like what host name, what account, what uh, what uh, password, and what database name. Okay. Okay. Um, it was, mm, I don't remember, uh, it might be in, oops. Uh, There was a spot, but I can't remember where it was. I forgot to write it down. It is, a, I believe it was a config file. There's just a, a password field and you, you put it in there. Any other questions? No, it wasn't in the web interface. You pre-specify it, yeah. Wasn't there a spikes tab in the configuration thing? A which tab? Yeah, so you can configure basically how Cacti will handle outliers in your data. So you can say, you know, if all of a sudden it spikes a thousand percent, it'll, you can configure it basically just to throw it out if you want, or you can configure it to uh, use standard deviation, um, variance based, uh, and it will, yeah, as Adam said, it'll look at the history and it'll pull out data that looks unsane. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks.